Job chapter 11. Job chapter 11. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town uh, of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, uh, saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples said to him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou hither again? In other words, goest thou there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. <coughs> but if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, to the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh or near unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off. And many of the Jews came uh, to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Mary unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And so this woman had great spiritual insight. She was very, a very spiritual sort of a woman. She understood, she recognized the Lord Jesus Christ for who he really is. The Christ, the Son of the living God. In fact, some of the men, they didn't seem to recognize him. As, as well as this woman did. So this woman, I would judge, is very spiritual. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master is come, and calleth for thee. As soon as she had heard, uh, as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, uh, which were with her in the house, and comforted her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. I just want to 
go back to these words of the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 25 of John chapter 11, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Now we need to understand, when we're born in this world, we're born as sinners in the sight of the Lord. We need to become saints. We need to have the righteousness of God given unto us as a free gift. And that can only come to us if we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and as the Bible says, and thou shalt be saved. This is what God wants for each and every one of us, that our soul be saved, that we'll be on our way to heaven. You see, when we're born in this world, as I said, we're born as sinners. Hell-deserving sinners at that. We deserve nothing more than the wrath of Almighty God for all eternity upon ourselves. But God has had compassion upon us and sent the Lord Jesus Christ to die upon the cross, be crucified for you and for me. When do you realize why the Lord Jesus Christ died? He died not for his own sin, because he has no sin. He's the perfect son of the living God. He was made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we need to understand there is a resurrection of the just and of the unjust. The just are those who have put their faith in Christ and be made just as though they'd never sinned in the sight of God through the precious blood of Jesus Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. In whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. I wonder, have your sins been forgiven? Are you a child of God? Yes, they thought that the, uh, the Jews uh, then, which were with her in the house and coveted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up out hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. They thought she was going to go there and just cry uh, where the grave was, where her brother was dead, uh, laying dead. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. You see, no one could stay dead in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. He's the author of life. He brings life to us. And that's what he wants to do for you this hour, my friend. Give you life and more abundantly. Give you life and life more abundant. And that can be experienced by you this hour, my friend, if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in his spirit, and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. And here is the shortest verse in the whole of the Word of God, the Bible. Jesus wept. In other words, Jesus cried. You must understand the compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ that he has for each one of us, realizing that we cannot save ourselves. He knows we can't save ourselves, but you have got to come to that knowledge where you realize, look, I am absolutely hopeless and helpless to save myself. I cannot get to heaven by myself. You've got to come to Christ to be saved. You've got to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to become a child of God, to have forgiveness for your sins. As I said, the Lord Jesus Christ has compassion upon you. He doesn't want you to perish. He doesn't want to have to judge you for all eternity in the lake of fire and brimstone with his weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. There's absolutely no need for that, my friend. Christ died on the cross that we might receive forgiveness for our sins. He shed his precious blood on the cross in whom we have redemption through his, uh, through his blood, 
even the forgiveness of sins. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave, it was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, uh, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, uh, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all. Nor consider that, is it, ex that is it, it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death. Jesus therefore, uh, walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. And the Jews' Passover was nigh or near at hand, and many uh, went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus, and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple, What well, think ye, will he not come? Oh, sorry. What well, think ye that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it, that they might take him. See, they wanted to take the Lord Jesus Christ away uh, and crucify him. But it wasn't the case. At this particular point, it wasn't the time. It was too early for the Lord Jesus Christ to be crucified. Now, John chapter 12. John chapter 12, then six days before the Passover came, sorry, then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus uh, was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of spic uh, oil of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. 
and the house was filled with the odour of the ointment. Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my burial. Has she kept this? For the poor always ye have with you, but ye, but, but me ye have not always. Much people of the Jews, therefore, knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but for that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they had they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him, and cried, saying, uh, Hosanna, blessed is he, sorry, blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Jesus, when he had found a young ass, that's a wild donkey, sat thereon as it is written. Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was uh, glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him. And they had done these things, sorry, and that they had done these things unto him. The people, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. For this cause the people also met him, for they had heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, perceive ye perceive how ye prevail nothing. Behold, the world is gone after him. And there were certain Greeks among them that uh, came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. And I hope you, this afternoon, want to see the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you trust him, if you put your faith in him, your soul will be saved. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat, meaning himself, fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Abide. Um, sorry. He that loveth his life shall lose it. Uh, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me here, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honour. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I both glorified it, and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, they said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. Jesus answered, answer, answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world 
be cast out, meaning the devil. You see, the devil was about to receive a fatal blow. The devil was defeated at the place called Calvary, my friend. The Lord Jesus Christ is the victor over sin, death, hell, and the devil. We need to understand that. And you and I need the victory too. The only way we can have the victory over these things is by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. And then that victory becomes ours as well. Yes, an angel spake to him and said, and answered and said, sorry, the people therefore that stood by and heard it, forget what I'm up to. Yeah, now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, said that it thundered. Others said, uh, an angel spake to him, Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. That is, the devil will be cast out when the Lord Jesus Christ dies on the cross of Calvary for you and for me. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. Yes, he had to die the crucifixion death. He had to be crucified upon the cross. The Bible says, Cursed is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. So we need to understand, we have a soul that needs to be saved, and the only way our soul can be saved is through the precious blood of Jesus Christ and our right response to that. You see, we've got to respond in the right way to God, to the love of God. Otherwise, there's nothing left but the wrath of God for all eternity because our sins have not been forgiven. But I'm here to tell you this, Ava, you need your soul saved. You need forgiveness for your sins. And that forgiveness is only possible through the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. Yes, he said, um, Yes, the Son of Man must be lifted up. Oh, oh, sorry. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou, The Son of Man shall be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? He's talking about himself here, my friend. He is the Son of Man, the Son of God. God himself, God in a body. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you, Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither or where he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus, and departed, and did hide himself from them. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. The saying of Isaiah, the prophet, might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, uh, who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord? Oh, sorry, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory, and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. 
for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that sent me, uh, seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth in on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which seeth me, he gave me a commandment. What I should say and what I should speak, and I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak therefore, even as the Father said unto me, I speak. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ is the perfect servant. He did the Father's will upon earth. No one else could please the Father like the Lord Jesus Christ did. There's absolutely no other person that is perfect. I mean, you know that, surely you know that, that you're not perfect, you're very less than perfect, same as me. But the point is this, you can be made perfect by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can receive the righteousness of God through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. In and of ourselves, we are definitely not perfect. We're far from it. We're sinners in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord Jesus Christ wants to save your soul this afternoon. Now, if you come to Christ, your soul will be saved. If you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. This is God's desire, my friend. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. A place where we'll change our mind, agree with God that you are a sinner. That's what repentance is. And then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. God wants you to be saved. But you can only be saved if you put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, whom to know is life eternal. The Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have the Son of God? Have you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ who desires this Arvo to take your sins completely away, wash them away in his precious blood, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. What will you do with Jesus, which is called the Christ? Will you bow to his authority in your life? You see, we be made to glorify God and to worship him and be satisfied with him alone in our lives. What have we done? We've gone, gone after the things, you know, money, booze, sex, whatever it is, pornography, whatever your problem is, whatever your sin is, that you can't seem to get rid of. The Lord wants to help you with that. The Lord wants to take your sins away. And also, not only that, to give you all of your sins, but he also wants to give you power over the sin in your life. That, was, that which is taking you captive, so to speak. You know, you're like a prisoner to sin, a slave to sin and to Satan. You need to come out from under the bondage of the devil, my friend. You need to be freed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, you can be made free through the finished work of Jesus Christ and your right response to that. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. God wants you to be in heaven, but the only way you can be there is through the Lord Jesus Christ. If you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before it's forever. 
and eternally too late. Remember, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried, but praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. Is your soul saved? Are you on your way to heaven? Or are you still on the, your way down to hell? There's no need to go there, my friend. You can be saved by the grace of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Just come in repentance toward God. Acknowledge that you're a sinner before God, in other words. And then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. In whom we have redemption, through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Heaven or hell, what will it be for you? So determined by what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Have a great night.